2023 has ended for the sport of boxing and this video i'll be telling you guys my 2023 fighter of the year and the way i've done this every year that i've done it is what i will do is i'll tell you my fighter of the year per weight class and once i've told you my fighter of the year for every weight class in the sport at the end of the video i rank each weight class as fighter of the year until we ultimately get the fighter of the year so to start it off my heavyweight fighter of the year and it's funny because this one switched literally on the 23rd because I'll tell you right now, I had it as Zheli Zhang at first. First two wins against Joe Joyce. That's a solid year. He did what he had to do. But after Saudi Arabia, I gave it to Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker wins heavyweight fighter of the year for me. What he did this year was defeat Deontay Wilders, Simon Keane, and Jack Massey. Jack Massey and Simon Keane are okay wins. They're nothing special. They're not bad wins, though. I mean, Jack Massey or Jack Macy, he arguably defeated Richard Riakpour at cruiserweight. But that's a cruiserweight moving up to heavyweight. So it's nothing tr too tremendous. And Macy didn't really accomplish much. Keen was an undefeated prospect who didn't really accomplish anything. Parker destroyed him. And obviously Deontay Wilder. That's my upset of the year. Joseph Parker got my upset of the year, and he ends up winning my heavyweight fighter of the year. It goes to Joseph Parker. Now for cruiserweight, I gave it to Chris Billum Smith. He defeated Lawrence Acoli and Master Ma 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 Matthias Masternak. He beat the number one guy in the weight class, arguably top two guy in the weight class at worst, in Lawrence Acoli. It was an ugly fight, but he got the job done. Did what he had to do. Every Acoli fight's ugly anyways. He defeated Lord and Sokoli, and he beat Matthias Masternak. Masternak's an awkward fighter. He always comes to fight, though. He's never gets dominated, never gets destroyed, and it's just a nice little extra additional win. But the reason he ended up winning fighter of the year for his weight class is obviously due to the Lawrence Sokoli victory. That's the main one. I mean, the Masternak one was more just like the cherry on top, but that one didn't really add too much for him. And I apologize if I keep looking down. I'm just making sure my list is spot on the way I remember it. Light heavyweight was a really weak year for all light heavyweights. It really wasn't impressive at all. But by default, I gave it to Arthur Baturbiev. He defeated Anthony Yard in the beginning of the year. And it's a shame that that Callum Smith fight got postponed due to Baturbiev injuring himself because a year with Anthony Yard and Callum Smith is a solid year. It's not a great year, but it's a decent year. And he would have won this division much easier if that happened. But all he has is, is a Anthony Yard victory. Very weak year for the light heavyweight division. However, Compared to everyone else, I mean, Dimitri Bivol beat Lyndon Arthur, and Lyndon Arthur beat Yard, but Yard also knocked Arthur out in the rematch. So because of that, I gave it to Baturbiev. Baturbiev also stopped Yard, while Bivol had a very boring decision win against Lyndon Arthur. So I gave it to Arthur Baturbiev, but a very weak year for the light heavyweights. So for super middleweight, I gave it very easily to David Benavidez. David Benavidez had the best year of his career, a real breakout year in my opinion. First year where he really separated himself from the pack and honestly is a fringe pound for pound level fighter at this point. He defeated Caleb Plant, fight I was at live, and Demetrius Andre. That's a really good year. He took down an undefeated fighter in Andre who has been in contention to fight guys like Canelo and Charlo for a very long time. He took Andre out, the first man to do so, and he beat Caleb Plant, which is one of Canelo's best wins in years, and I know everyone loves to bring up how Canelo stopped Plant and whatever, but Benavidez really put a beating on him the way Canelo couldn't. Yes, Canelo was able to catch him and put him away, but Canelo had a tough time really finding Plant in that fight. Yes, he was winning the rounds, but it wasn't very dominant, and then he caught him and stopped him. Benavidez beat him down. He had a really good year. Those are two really good wins. Caleb Plant is a really good fighter who I'd pick to defeat Jamal Charlo at this point. And Demetrius Andre has always been a respectable fighter, respectable name. He's a, what was he? He's only, he's a two-weight champion. He was undefeated, never beaten. That's a good win for sure. And he destroyed Andre, man. He made him look like a D-level fighter. So Benavidez easily gets it for super middleweight. At middleweight, I gave it to Janibek Alam Connolly for his wins against Gultieri and Butler. Gultieri, he unified. Now, Gultieri was nothing impressive ever from what I've seen of him, but he had a belt. And Janibek unified and dominated him in one very dominant performance. Looked very good in that fight. One of the best performances he's had in a while. And the Butler win, the Stephen Butler win, it was more just like, you know, an extra fight for him. It didn't really add too much to his career, but it was a destructive win. He looked very good. I'm not going to get too into middleweight. Middleweight was a really bad year. You know, Liam Smith would have won it if he beat Eubank in the rematch, but he didn't. Next, we have junior middleweight. This one easily went to Tim Zhu for his wins against... Mendoza, Harrison, and Acampo, man. The, you know, the Brian Mendoza win was a really good win because Mendoza was coming off the Fandora win. And whoever won that fight would have won fighter of the year for 154. He beat Mendoza, who's a very respectable, durable fighter, who's just a very good fighter. Very, very good name for sure. He beat Tony Harrison. I was actually picking Tony to win that fight. Got it completely wrong. He looked tremendous in that bout. And he beat Harrison better than Charlo beat him, better than anyone beat him. He looked great. And Acampo, I mean, Acampo 
just gave Sebastian Fandor a very difficult fight, went the full 12 rounds, and he obliterated Lecompo in a round. So really good year for Tim Zhu. And by the way, he's the only guy in this entire video that gets mentioned that fought three times this year. So that gives him extra brownie points. He fought three times this year. Everyone else has fought twice or once. Now for welterweight, it's obviously Terrence Bud Crawford for his victory against Errol Spence. I want to let you guys know this was performance of the year, easily. He was pound for pound number one for a period of time after the Spence win. I have a newie back at number one, but Crawford's top two pound for pound now. Performance of the year. Took out a rival that we've wanted to see Crawford fight for years. It was a great victory for Crawford, and he did it in such phenomenal fashion. He only fought once, which is a big detriment. If he got that Spence rematch, he would have won it. You know, He would have won fighter of the year without doubt, but now there's some doubt because he only fought once. But it was a great performance and a great win. Best win I've seen a fighter have in years and best performance I've seen in my lifetime in the sport of boxing. When you look at junior welterweight he only fought once at this weight class but it was his last fight so he ends up getting it for junior welterweight and not for lightweight and that goes to Devin Haney for his victories against Vasil Lomachenko and Regis Progress. now on paper that sounds better than almost anyone on the list what's holding him back is Regis had a career worst performance prior and in my opinion lost to Zarilla and I felt he lost to Loma so that is holding him back but on paper he defended his undisputed championship and became a champion in a second weight class defeating a top two top three guy in the weight and sweeping him, winning 120 to 107, winning a shutout. So great year for Devin Haney, even if there were some factors that weakened that resume. It doesn't change the fact that Devin had a great year, another great year. Last year, he was also a fighter year candidate, by the way, if his two wins against George Camboso. So shout out to Devin Haney for how he did in the last two years. At lightweight, I gave it to Gervonta Tank Davis, aka Abdullah Wahid came out of completely nowhere but i'm still gonna call him tank because it's way too way easier i think if everyone starts to change if everyone starts calling him wahid i'll start calling him that but it's a little too early for me to just change it right away he defeated ryan garcia and hector garcia he had a really solid year it's kind of a shame though because he had two really good wins and it was only april he could have easily fought at least once more maybe even twice more and had an all-time great year for himself however he didn't do that and on, and settled for the best year in his weight class but not that he's not going to win obviously but hector garcia that's a good win not, not aging great as hector garcia just got taken out by lamont roach and ryan garcia that's a great win that will age very well so tank had a great year shout out to him Super featherweight, I gave it to my boy Oshaki Foster. He had a really underrated year defeating Ray Vargas and Rocky Hernandez. I picked him to win both of those fights, so I feel very proud of myself because he was the underdog against Vargas, and a lot of people are picking Rocky to beat him. I think he was even the underdog against Rocky Hernandez. The odds were very close. The Ray Vargas fight, he looked super sharp in, dominated him, outboxed him, outclassed him, looked great. And against Hernandez, that was a fight of year candidate. A really good fight. He came he came back. You know, he, he started the fight strong. Rocky ended up taking over, and then he dug deep and ended up stopping Rocky. So great year for Oshaki Foster. Very underrated. For featherweight, I gave it to Rafael Espinoza for taking out my good friend Robesi Ramirez and two bums in Mexico. We're not going to get into those other two names because they add nothing to his resume. But beating the number one guy in the weight class, because I do believe Robesi was the number one guy. Maybe not off of resume. You can probably say Luis Lopez accomplished a little more at 126, but I felt Robesi was a better fighter than Lopez, and he was able to defeat him. So... Really good year from Rafael Espinoza. I'm going to say it right now. I, I've thought about it. I think Robesi will take him in the rematch. I hope it happens. But great year for Espinoza for sure. At Super Bantamweight, I gave it to obviously Noya Inouye for his wins against Stephen Fulton and Marlon Tapales. He became undisputed and he, he unified and then became undisputed. So he won four belts in one year. I don't know if that's been done in who knows how long. Winning four belts in one year is actually tremendous. Great year for Noya Inouye. Became a 2-8 undisputed champion. Both wins were super dominant. The Fulton win was the second best performance of the year behind Crawford's performance against Spence. I think that was second place for performance of the year, in my opinion. And the Topolis win just solidified how great of a fighter he was, or he is. For Bantamweight, I gave it to Jason Maloney for beating Astrolabio. Astrolabio was a nice up-and-comer. I actually thought Astrolabio might take him. I wasn't sure, but I thought he had a really good shot. Maloney ended up beating him, boxing very well, and solidifying himself as the number one guy in the weight class. However, that's his only win. Not, not a tremendous year for Bantamweight. Super flyweight, I gave to Junto Nakatani. Knockout of the year against Andrew Maloney. Great win. And dominated Largi Cortez. The same Cortez that Juan Francisco Estrada went life and death with. This is also the first year where Junto Nakatani really stamped himself as an elite fighter. He's always been great. This is the first year where he really proved it. Flyweight easily goes to Bam Rodriguez for his wins against Sonny Edwards and Hernandez. Christian Hernandez. The Sonny Edwards win was a great win. He unified belts, dominated an opponent that many people felt he would lose to. And the Hernandez win, it wasn't he didn't look phenomenal in that fight, but he got the job done convincingly. Stayed active, fought twice. Now, this part I'm going to go by really quickly because a lot of people don't keep up with these weights. Ken Shiro wins light fly for his wins against Hecky Butler and Anthony Olasquagua. Uh, Ken Shiro is a great fighter, pound for pound, top 10 for me. 
two really solid wins, especially the Butler win. Butler was always highly respected. He dominated him. Great year for Kenshiro. Not not as good as 2022, but a really solid year. And for minimum weight, goes to Genjiro, Shigioka for beating Pradya, Pradabshri, and Mendez. Pradabshri was the guy who dethroned Wen Hangmanayafin, and that's a really solid win. He became a champion. And Mendez, that was just another solid victory for him. Nothing great, but solid. All right, here we go. We're taught in the most important part of the video. I've already talked for 10 minutes. It's actually crazy. We're going to rank these guys now. 17th place, because now it's for each weight class, is Arthur Baturbiev. All he did is beat Yard. Yard's, you know, nothing. He's solid win, but nothing incredible. Only one fight. Number 16, Jason Maloney for his win against Astrolabio. I think Yard's probably a better fighter than Astrolabio. But the reason Maloney is above Baturbiev is he became the number one guy in his weight class with this victory. And I believe he won a belt in this fight as well. Well, Baturbiev just had a regular defense. And number 15 is Ken Shiro for his wins against Butler and Olasquagua. Butler was a really respectable name. Ken Shiro stamped himself as a pound-for-pound level fighter, fought twice. 14, Janibek Alam Connolly for unifying against Goltieri and beating Butler. He stamped himself as the best guy at middleweight right now and unified titles and was super dominant. At 13, Genjiro Shigeoka for beating arguably top guy or top two guy in his weight class in Pradabsri and Mendez, becoming a champion, looked great. And number 12, Junto Nakatani for KO of the year against Maloney and his win against Cortez. He fought twice. He beat two very solid names and was super dominant in those wins, as well as stamped himself as an elite fighter. And number 11, Rafael Espinoza for being the most talented guy in his weight class and becoming a champion. Number 10, Tim Zhu for fighting three times, beating three two very solid names and one okay name in Mendoza, Harrison, and Ocampo. Mendoza was coming off a career best win. Harrison, the only the first man to beat Jermel Charlo, the only man to beat him not named Canelo, looked phenomenal in that fight, and Ocampo just obliterated him. And number nine, I gave it to Joseph Parker for his win against Deontay Wilder. That was upset of the year and a great win. Simon Keane and Jack Macy, those wins were all right. But, the, you know, upset of the year and beating Deontay Wilder is a, is a very tremendous feat. The only other man to do that was Tyson Fury. Number eight, I gave it to Chris Billum Smith for his wins against Akoli Masternak. He beat the number one guy in the weight class or number two guy in the weight class. Became the champion and also fought a solid name in Masternak. And number seven, I gave it to Gervonta Tank Davis for beating one of the most talented fighters in the sport and Ryan Garcia, and also becoming a champion against Hector Garcia. Not a great performance, but he, he, he fought twice against two solid names, especially Ryan. No controversy in those fights either. Good, good year for Tank, for sure. He definitely had potential to win fighter of the year if he stayed more active. It's a shame. And number five, Oshaki Foster for defeating Ray Vargas and becoming a champion and defending against a very dangerous Rocky Hernandez who no one wanted to fight. A great fight against Hernandez and a great performance against Vargas. And number five, I gave it to Bam Rodriguez for his win against Sonny Edwards and Hernandez. The, the Sonny Edwards win, he unified, dominated, had top five performance of the year against Sonny Edwards and unified. Hernandez is another solid name. Great year for Bam Rodriguez. Number four, I gave it to Devin Haney. A lot of people had Haney higher. I thought number four was appropriate due to the factors surrounding those two wins. The first one in Loma, as I said, I felt he lost. Most felt he lost. Still a really good name and still fought very well when you look at how good of a fighter Loma is. And Regis Prograce, Regis had a career worst performance, but at the same time, that's a top three guy in the weight class, and he swept him. Great year for Devin, but not perfect. Number three goes to David Benavidez. He defeated Caleb Plant, Demetrius Andre. Those are two tremendous names to have on your resume. Great year for David Benavidez. The two best names on his resume he got this year. Another performance of your candidate against Demetrius Andre. Really good outing from David Benavidez, and... He clearly solidified himself as the man to face Canelo next, or at least that deserves it. And here we go. It's between Crawford and Nanui, and unfortunately for me, because a fighter I like more gets second place, and second place goes Terrence Crawford. Every year I've had the criteria where you've had to fight twice. Even in 2020, you know who my 2020 fighter of the year was? Joe Smith Jr. for fighting Olivier Alvarez and, and um, Jesse Hart. So I'm very consistent. Twice a year. That's what separated it, and that's why Nui wins with Fulton and Tapalis. Anui did what Crawford did in becoming a 2-8 undisputed champion, except the only difference is he fought twice. That's the only difference. <laughs> Crawford became a 2-8 undisputed champion, and Anui did so as well, except Anui fought twice this year while Crawford fought once, while Anui also won four belts this year while Crawford won three. I mean, Anui got second place for performance, for performance of the year. I think Anui just edges it out for me, guys. Very close, very close but I gave it to Nelia Anui over Terrence Crawford. It's a shame because I like Crawford more, and Crawford does win performance of the year for me, but Nui fought twice, man. That's that's really what separates it. A lot of people don't like that rule, but it's, it has to be mandatory, in my opinion, or, or no fighter would be fighting twice a year. So Nui gets it for me. He he fought two champions this year. Crawford fought one. Nui became undisputed in the second weight class, just like Crawford did while also fighting twice. 
Thanks for watching, guys. That's my full video. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below, and also tell me your fighter of the year and your rankings for each weight class if you want as well, just like I did. You know, it took a while, but I felt it's very detailed breakdown. Thanks for watching, guys. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Have a good one. God bless. I'll see you guys later. Peace.